Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Dr. Michael Poppelreiter. He is a geologist with Shell in the Netherlands. Dr. Poppelreiter, thank you for joining us today via Skype. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you. Well, the pleasure is ours. Um, you're also a professor at the University of Tübingen in Germany. Um, and the reason that we've asked you to join us uh, via Skype uh, is because uh, on November 10th, you had a presentation at the Apovian Armenian Cultural Center in the Netherlands, where you presented um, a paper, a study called Geology of Armenia, How the Armenian Mountains Were Formed. Uh, how did this come about? What is your relationship uh, with Armenia and with how our mountains were formed? That's a good question. Uh, <coughs> the whole project started actually um, something like five years ago. Mm -hmm. I was responsible for a geological research project in Oman. Now you ask yourself, <coughs> what has Oman to do with Armenia? Now, <laughs> geologically, Oman and Armenia many million years ago uh, belonged both to Arabia. Now, at the same time, I had a colleague from Berlin, and uh, he investigated parts of Iran and Armenia. And uh, when we met, we found out that we do research at the same geological interval. And I just was curious uh, how the Arabian rocks look 3,000 kilometers to the north. So I traveled to Armenia. And uh, remember very well, we uh, had a first excursion to Alaverdi as a taxi driver. And the taxi driver stopped every uh, two or three kilometers uh, because I asked him to stop at every individual rock exposure which we could find there. So he got nervous and say, what, what is that for a tourist? I mean, we are stopping here. Uh, we are supposed to go to historical monuments when we are stopping here somewhere in the middle of the road. And uh, so we started to talk, and um, I told him why I was there, interested in geology. So he was kind enough to uh, establish connection with one of his friends, who was a geologist, an Armenian geologist. <laughs> Only in Armenia would you find a taxi driver who had connections with a geologist. <laughs> so we visited this uh, gentleman in his apartment. And uh, even so, we could not very well understand each other. He had a geological map, and uh, step by step, um, started to get to know uh, the layers of Armenia. Now, out of curiosity, the next time when I visited Armenia, I um, went to the Armenian Academy of Science and met a very knowledgeable Armenian specialist, uh, Professor Vilen Agmalian, who is working there as a geoscientist. And we talked and developed a project. We wanted to put together a book for non-geologists describing the geology of Armenia layer by layer. Like you read a book, layer by layer, but unfortunately both of us didn't have time. Uh, lots of business travel, he had investigations of the field and so forth. So our preparation <coughs> to this book ended up in this presentation. But during this visit with uh, Vilain Agmalian, I also met my wife. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> she is Armenian as well. What uh, actually increased the interest in, in Armenia uh, even more. And um, Finally, my wife and I went to the uh, Armenian uh, Culture Club in The Hague and we agreed to give a presentation on the geology of Armenia. That's such a fascinating story. So, th actually, the first time you come to Armenia, you, you came here with no contacts. You find a random taxi driver to take you to Alaverdi and, and you, and you uh, start on this journey, which ends up, you know, finding you... <laughs> A wife, it's quite spectacular. But um, in the presentation, uh, you also talked about 
why the Stone Age and Bronze, Bronze Age started earlier in Armenia than in other regions, and questions like why are there so many earthquakes in Armenia? Uh, these are fascinating uh, things for us to learn about. Um, what, have, what has your study shown you? I mean, why, for example, um, you know, the 25th anniversary of the 1988 earthquake is uh, in about a week's time here in Armenia, and it's a very important uh, time for us to mark that devastating time in our, in our nation's history when almost 25,000 people were killed and entire cities and towns uh, were, were wiped away. So why is it that we are prone to these movements of the earth here? I would think uh, uh, to better understand the link between our human history and geological history, it is a good picture to think about ice rafts, to think about the Antarctic and about ice rafts. Now the Earth's surface uh, to some degree is similar to these ice rafts. Wherever we have a crack between the ice rafts, there's friction, and this friction typically causes earthquakes, can cause volcanism, and other things. Now, if you think about Armenia, you need to know that Armenia is part, geologically speaking, is part of Iran. And uh, it is like a small ice raft, which originally, 600 million years ago, belonged to Africa. And then this small ice raft, Iran and the northern tip, Armenia, started to break away and started to drift and drift. And when it finally ended up in Europe, its long journey through geological time ended up in uh, colliding with the European plate. There was this crack between the European plate, like a big ice raft, and the Armenian-Iranian plate. And exactly at this crack, we have, if you want it or not, a weakness zone. And in this weakness zone, uh, there's the tendency to have earthquakes, to have volcanisms, and so forth. So what is on the one hand side giving the beautiful color uh, to uh, Yerevan, the tooth, is orange-red brings also the tendency to have earthquakes, unfortunately. Uh, not only the history, but also the geology of Armenia is pretty complex. And the complex history uh, ends up by nature in uh, earthquakes and volcanism. So that's unavoidable. It's, it's, uh, it's almost Im uh, difficult to comprehend what you've just told me. Um, we're talking about hundreds of millions of years ago and how all of those things that happened all those uh, millions of years ago today affects us on such a personal level. It's, it's quite fascinating um, because Armenia, as you said, also has uh, many volcanoes. And as part of your talk, you'll said that there's a diverse agriculture in Armenia since the times of the Urardian uh, kingdom. And what, how, how does that, um, how does geology help us find those answers? Now I would say the most, uh, the most interesting, uh, the most interesting fact is that human history and geological history are so similar in Armenia. Without uh, going into detail, um, at the same event, something like 50 million years ago, when Armenia finally um, approached Europe and uh, was um, or started to become uh, the southern part of um, as the Caucasus region, very intense volcanism started to develop. This volcanism uh, left uh, a thick uh, column of rocks approximately 60 to 70 percent of Armenia are covered with volcanic rocks. Now we know these volcanic rocks uh, from uh, the obsidian, which was used in the Stone Age to uh, manufacture tools. And if these volcanic rocks uh, weather 
because of precipitation, because of rain and so forth, they turn into extremely fertile soil. Now, you have good climate, you have uh, the four biblical rivers coming from the Caucasus region, and you have very, very fertile ground. Now, these ingredients uh, make it easy for uh, early civilization to find tools, to find environment, and to find later on uh, deposits which can be used to advance technology. So, the oldest humans found outside Africa had a very uh, pleasant and easy environment. Water, soil, temperature, and as we see, the Armenian culture developed uh, very, very early on. So there is a direct correlation between the geological makeup, let's say, of a particular place, a particular country, and the advancement of the civilization that lived in those areas. That's correct. Very early on, uh, the natural conditions, in one way or the other, influenced human development and where Mother Nature provided particularly water, but later on also fertile soil or certain deposits, uh, humans could thrive, human culture could develop and had a natural advantage. And uh, we see that in the uh, Golden Crescent from uh, the uh, course of the Nile, the Euphrates, and so forth, and other rivers like the Kura or Arax, all of these areas have a combination of very favorable conditions which are related to climate as well as to geology and led to development of highly developed civilization. Yeah, because the Kura Arax River Basin is one of the biggest river basins in the region, uh, if I remember correctly uh, from my studies in the past. Uh, it's interesting, when I hear you talking about the ver fertile soil, the uh, abundance of water that we do have in Armenia, uh, the geological formations, you know, earlier, the Stone Age and Bronze Age that started earlier in Armenia than in other regions, um, and yet at the same time we are prone, we have the gifts of nature and yet we also have the dangers of nature where we have earthquakes and we also have the, uh, the, the ability to uh, develop our agriculture much more than we have been able to thus far. Is that a correct um, sort of wrap up of all of what you've been trying to explain? Absolutely. The uh, nature uh, gives a certain environment uh, which has developed over uh, millions of millions of years. Uh, the humans have the opportunity to sensibly use these uh, gifts, uh, but on the other hand, uh, what can be very favorable, of course, if abused, if violated, or if overused, uh, will turn exactly in the opposite. Uh, therefore, the uh, sensible knowledge, understanding of what resources are there, what advantages and disadvantages they have is important. And of course, um, over millions of years, or in the case of humankind, over thousands of years, we have uh, made experiences. We have learned how to adjust, how to adapt, which areas to avoid. But of course now, we live in a different world. Uh, there is no space anymore to move. The uh, fertile areas are all occupied. Our resources are used or overused. So we need to think about a different kind of um, uh, development of the humankind. But uh, Armenia is certainly blessed, like few other countries, with natural resources. And, um, uh, of course, also very intelligent uh, uh, and well-educated people. Well, on that very positive uh, 
explanation and note. Um, I really want to thank you, Dr. Paul Pereiter, for this most fascinating and amazing conversation that we've had. I know that I've certainly learned uh, a great deal about the geology of Armenia, of a country where I live. Um, uh, so I hope that you will be visiting us again. Uh, and hopefully we can have you here at CivilNet in our studio and we can have a, a longer conversation about natural resources and how to protect them and how to make sure that we use them wisely. Thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to talk to you and I hope we have the chance to publish the book with Professor Agmalian in the future. Well, well, we'll be looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Dr. Michael Poppelreiter, who is a geologist with Shell in the Netherlands. Thank you for watching CivilNet.